Okay, so this is this is going to be a form, one of the formal methods. Um, I'm just going to pull this out because we've been using it a lot, and I just want you guys to be real comfortable with these. These are just free form curve options, and so that's why we're using them because essentially what we're doing is creating free form surfaces. So I am going to I'm just going to do it on this layer here. I'm just going to start to create sort of just a pro, just some kind of a shape, just some kind of profile like that. And um, I'm going to try using this one instead, which is the control points. So it's going to give me a lot more of a, you see how the points don't actually stay on the surface there? And that looks good to me. And then I'm going to go back to using this one again. So what I'm going to do is something like, that and maybe something like that. Okay. So now that I've got all that taken care of, what I'm going to do is select all those curves and I'm going to extrude them. We did a bunch of that last week. So I'm just going to extrude them and let's see how high we're, I'm going to go 100. I'm going to back to shaded mode so you can see what's going on here. So now you see I've created this uh, set of curves. They all overlap each other and that's sort of what's important here is that every single one of these is extending further than the actual shape that I'm creating. And we're actually going to um, use another command that's going to help clean that information up for us. So all this other stuff is kind of in our way, so I'm just going to hide it, our previous project. And I'm going to go into front view. Um, get off rendering. OK, and so now I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm kind of just start out here. I'm going to make sure my object snaps are off so it doesn't touch anything on that object, because I just want to draw on a plane. So I'm going to do something like that. And let's do something I'm actually going to start this one from the other side, actually. So I'm going to start it from here. And I'm going to go down to 0, 0, 0. And then turn the ortho on. So now I've created, in front view, I've created two planes. And if you look in perspective, you'll see they're flat. And that's thanks to the planer being on. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extrude these curves. And I'm going to run them through this object like that. So now if I zoom into this and go into perspective, you can see I've kind of created a curve in every direction. And you, the key thing here is to make sure that they overlap. And so right here, it looks like I need to maybe pull the surface up. So I'm going to turn my gumball on. I'm going to hold down Control and Shift, select that edge surface, and I'm just going to slightly bring it upward. So that way, it definitely is inside my planes there. Because you want to make sure that you know everything is intersecting. And so now that I have that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select. I'm going to go select curves, and I'm just going to hide them for now. And then I want to do more than one version of this to show you guys. So what I'm going to do is copy it. Sorry about that. I'm just going to copy it and move it over. Curves turned back on. They did. That's fine. Okay. And so now I'm going to show you the command that's going to sort of create the shape that we're looking for here. And so if you select, well, let's go to surface. Or where is that command? There it is. So under solid, 
We're going to go all the way down to the bottom, and the second to last is called Create Solid. So if you click that, what it's going to do is select intersecting surfaces and poly surface to automatically trim and join into a closed poly surface. It's a mouthful, but essentially what it's doing is it's doing everything for you. So normally what you would do is go through and split and do all this stuff. Well, if you have all these intersecting surfaces, you can select them all. Oop, don't select your other model there. And it says, do you want to delete input? I'm going to say yes, I'd like for it to delete the input which is going to be all the extraneous information. I don't need it. And when I hit enter, it got rid of all that extraneous information and now it's created a curvature, an object that was curved based off of all those initial curves that I made. And you see how, see how easy that was, right? So maybe if you were to try to mimic one of those models, you would take a top view photo of it and create these profiles and then extrude them up, right? And then take a photo maybe in side view and try to figure that out. And then you could do this process. So this is one method for creating some of those models over there, right? I mean, this isn't the model exactly, but it's attempting to do something similar. And so one other thing I wanted to show you was, let's say if we go over to here, and you want to have more of a curvature. Like, let's say you want your sides to be curved. I'm going to use the gumball. And I'm going to rotate the object slightly. And maybe, oops, and then I'll select the other one and rotate that one slightly. Oops. And I don't know how much I'm rotating it there. It might be too much. No, it looks like I'm good. And then let's go ahead and uh, rotate rotate this one. Now, I did that right now, and you notice what happened. It doesn't quite fit. It doesn't quite make it anymore, right? And so a good way to fix that is to extend the surface. That command allows you to select a surface edge and then it asks for a distance and it says five feet. That's probably not enough because we're working at hundreds of feet right now. So I'm gonna go 50 and you can see now it's extended that surface out. And it looks like it fixed that problem. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it on top too just to make sure that it reaches far past. And so now that I've moved that one, um, I'm gonna do the same for the back here. Um, I'm gonna move this one I'm going to go this way with it. And you can see it's sort of just sort of forming it. It's kind of not very thought out right now, but this is definitely just to get your guys' feet wet with doing this, this process. And I'm just going to extend that. And so now we've kind of angled our walls. Now we no longer have a simple extrusion. Now this thing has sort of got some angles. So let's... Um, Let's do the exact same command again. So we'll go to solid, create solid, and we'll select it all. And now I have a similar version of the same object that I had before, but this time, you can see my walls are now angled outward and inward. So if I go into top view, or front view, you can see and instead of having a straight wall now, now it's angled inward and the back is also angled. And if we go into another view, well, that one's not going to help us. But So you can see how easy it was to um, you know, create a surface or solid from uh, individual surfaces. Now, as for those projects, what they're doing is they're starting to... Uh, intersect these objects with each other. So if you start to like put them within each other. And uh, maybe if you move it that way slightly. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna attempt to Boolean these objects now. Boolean split. So I'm going to select the object I want to be split. I'm going to select the cutting object, 
And now if I hide this, you can see it's cut this chunk out. So I'm going to actually go back and not hide it. And go into ghosted. So there's that piece that I cut out. And now you can see they've, if you were to get inside here, you can see it's cut it. So now if we did the same thing to the other side, Boolean split, select the object we want cut. I don't think it'll do it actually because, yeah, because it's not inside of it. So maybe if we just try a simple split here. Boolean two objects would do it, huh? So uh, just splitting it though, it seems like it it did it. Yep. So if I hide that, now I've got that cut out. And so just having just these two objects here, if I copy them over, just for the sake of getting it over, you can see now that these two objects have actually intersected each other. If I explode this and I remove this one surface here, you can see now one surface has become our one or two poly surfaces have become now one single poly surface. And so now you can start to see how these things have been sort of joined together. And maybe that's not the cleanest intersection because I did it really roughly. But if you actually took some time, you know, maybe you could actually get something a little bit more controlled. Um, I want to try what you said. The <clears throat> Boolean two objects, so select two objects. So now it's going to give me options of what I want to happen, which I think that's already happening. And this would be the other option. So if you want to, if you wanted this option, then you're going to hit enter, and it split it for us there. But it also got rid of the uh, existing, so I probably should have said don't delete input. <laughs> so I select my two objects. Oh, what do we got going here? It created it for me and didn't delete it. But anyways, everybody should have their own version of this. I mean, now you can see that these two objects have become one. And so they start to share the environment, the same environment with each other. And so you can see if you started to add a couple more on here and maybe actually had a flat ground plane, something that was actually walkable, a little bit more architectural instead of just objective objects like this. So inside is empty, right? Inside is empty. It's hollow. Do you make it as extrude? So if you need, would you extrude as a kind of like solid extrude? The thing is, is whenever you extrude something, it's still hollow on the inside. Solid is sort of, it's a lie. <laughs> it's not really solid. Um, so I have a this issue with glass and this is kind of like you just make it like this, but we couldn't make it as a, as a um, kind of like thickness. Yeah, like apply a thickness to this really? after the fact. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole other monster right there. So. I don't know if anybody followed along with me on this and did it themselves, but if you didn't, um, this video will be for you to be able to reference as one of the formal techniques to use. So I'm going to just show everything back up again. And it's sort of a mess, but you can see sort of the iterations I created and then our first project here.